In this particular presentation, I am going to explain you p-value calculation and I am going to talk of both the cases when you are talking of one tail test and two tail test. We are going to learn p-value through an example and then we are going to use Microsoft Excel to compute p-value. And at the end, we will make a note that how do you use p-value for hypothesis testing. So let me first start with p-value. Let me give you formal definition. It says under the assumption that null hypothesis is true. So first thing you are taking that null hypothesis is true. Then it is the probability of observing a phenomena at least as extreme as that observed. Are you confused? We are just going to understand this by an example. So just hold on. So let's understand this by an example. Let's say if the null, there is a factory of cricket ball which is producing cricket ball and they have found that the null hypothesis is that that the average of average diameter of 100 balls taken randomly at any given hour of production follows normal distribution with mean 100 mm and standard deviation 1 mm. So if this is a null hypothesis that mean is 100 mm and standard deviation is 1 mm and at any hour let's say at 11 am on 22nd June you took 100 ball and you found the average diameter to be 102 mm then what is the p-value in this case? So if you take the definition it means if you assume that this null hypothesis is true then the probability of getting value as extreme as 102 means probability of getting value 102 or 102.1 or 102.2 or 102.2.2 all those things are probability of getting value as extreme as 102 so it means you are talking of probability of getting 102 or more so essentially if you remember in case of normal distribution we talk that 102 is two standard deviation away right 100 was the mean and 102 was here so it is two standard deviation away and if you remember in normal distribution case within two standard deviation you have 95.4 percent of the 45 percent of the total observation which means that the probability of getting value less than 98 or probability of getting more than 102 is 100 minus 95.45 which is 4.55 percent so what is the probability of sample average to be more than 100 true it will be 4.55 by 2 because both sides you know which are symmetric makes it 4.55 percent so one side will be 2.27 and the same way probability of getting average to be less than 98 will be less than equal to 98 will be 2.27 so now if we are talking of one tail test which is the where you are talking of H not less than equal to 100 mm and H a greater than 100 mm then 2.27 is the probability of observing value as extreme as 102 because you are bothered with just one tail Generically, if you are talking of null hypothesis, where the is, it will be the probability of getting value equal to or more than that observed. So, essentially, if you have got 102, it will be probability of getting value 102 or more, right? Th that is in the right tail case. In the case of left tail test, it will be probability of getting less value equal to or less than that observed. So, it will be probability of x less than or equal to what you have already observed if null hypothesis is true so it would have been less than equal to 98 so in case of one tail you know that whatever you have calculated if it is 102 you have got 102 then 2.27 is the probability however if we are talking of two tail test where h0 is 100 and h alternative is not equal to 100 mm and if you have got 102 you know for you it simply means you have gone two standard deviation away from the mean 
in a, the moment you get 102 for you getting 102 is as good as getting 98 because you are bothered with both sides so in this case if the p value whatever is the p value that you have got you actually multiplied by 2 so what you do you actually take both sides so it is 2 into minimum of probability of x getting x probability of x greater than equal to that of x observed or probability of x less than equal to x that observed and you take the minimum of 2 and then you multiply it by 2 that's what gives you the p value and let's say if you know if you're talking of uh, two diamond uh, two tail test here and if you have got 102 then probability of getting value more than equal to 102 is 2.27 and this probability you know because you haven't observed so this like you can't calculate in that case it will be 2 into 2.27 that will give you 4.55 so what you need to understand roughly like in one tail test whatever you calculate that's what becomes the p-value wherever in whereas in two tail test you actually multiply it by two to get because you are bothered with both sides now let me show you how do you calculate p-value using excel so suppose if you are talking of one tail test and you are saying h naught is less than 100 and h alternative is greater than 100 mm and the sample mean which you have taken the sample statistic has come 103.2 then what is the p value in this case we will use norm based function of action and let me show you how do you do it so what you have got the actual value is 103.2 the assumed mean was 100 the assumed standard deviation was 1 so if you talk of cumulative probability of obtaining value less than 103.2 will be given by norm dist x which is 103 mean is 100 standard deviation is 1 and then when you say true it gives you cumulative probability which has come out to be 0.999 313 so what is the probability of observing value greater than or equal to 103.2 it will be 1 minus this value so that's what is the p value and if it was a two tail test what you could have done you will actually have to multiply this by 2 that's what will give you the p value so now coming back to the presentation you can say that the p value its probability of uh, its observed probability of type 1 error think of if null hypothesis is true then what you have got is the probability of observing value at least as extreme as that observed under the assumption that null hypothesis is true so in that sense you can say it's the observed probability of type 1 error or you may say that you know you start with significance level of 0.5 or 0 0.05 or 0 0.01 but what you have got is the observed significance level because that's it is going till there right let's say if this is the case you know 100 and 102.3 then you are talking of this whole area is the observed type 1 error you if you think of you know if you take this particular thing as a extreme value then it beyond this is the probability of observing value at least as extreme as that observed when the null hypothesis is true so it is like a type 1 error observed type 1 error now how do you use this p value for hypothesis testing it's you know a business has decided for a particular level of significance let's say alpha then one will reject null hypothesis if p is less than alpha so suppose you have decided of 0 0.01 let's say in the earlier case 0 0.01 and what p value you have got is far more smaller because if you think of the p value that you have got is 0 0.000687 then you will reject null hypothesis so what 
you can say one reject null hypothesis if p value is less than alpha and think of why it is happening it will happen only if the value is in the critical range right i mean if you had decided that okay you know you are going for 95% confidence interval it means you are talking of 101.96 if it is here only in this case the p value will be smaller than alpha right so it will happen only if the observed value is in the critical range only then the p value can be smaller than the alpha and that's how you use it for hypothesis testing